You weren't looking up. I was mimicking you. Oh. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I look like? Uh, from my point of view, sure. <laughs> you need glasses. I do need glasses. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking at my screen. I'm like, if it's not, if the font's not 32 or higher, I can't see it anymore. 32. That's not bad for 70 year old. 70 year old? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not 70 yet. It's funny, though. Somebody told me the other day um, I'm middle aged, and I was like, no, I'm past it. And they said, uh, wait, wait, wait. What's middle aged? Right, exactly. I'm, if I live to be 100, then right now I'm middle aged. I don't think I'm going to make it to 100. My family doesn't have a very high, uh, we don't live very long. On uh, on either side. Well, stick but. around for at least one more year. We kind of okay. we kind of like you on this podcast. Do you? Do you? <laughs> Until you find a replacement, which <laughs> probably <laughs> won't be too hard. Well, and this is the moment well, we officially announce opening at the Row Radio. Sure. <laughs> Here's the thing: the reason I stick around with this is because I'm the only person that can put up with you this much. <laughs> There's is, nobody. That is nobody. probably <laughs> true. There is some <laughs> truth to that statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My OCD kind of turns people away. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yes, a little bit. A little, <laughs> a little bit. bit. All right. Um, great conversation with uh, Master Kaiki. Yes. Um, you know, um, what are we talking about? Bad habits. It, and it was so, so, for me, if you don't mind if I take the lead on this for just for a moment. No, but, I always do. But, but Go this for got, it. No, actually, I don't. I let you talk. Uh, on the right. takeaways a little more. But, but the... What was really interesting for me in my mind, this entire conversation, as it was unfolding, we kept coming back to mm -hmm. almost the same thing. Yeah. One, fundamentals. Two, bad habits. Yeah. It was like those two, th no matter where we took the conversation, it kept bleeding back to those two points in some variety or some shape or form. Yeah. What, 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 what do you think? Um, I think that those are two really important things not only in life but in jujitsu and um you know we talked i talked briefly about it in the episode um this past weekend there was a ufc fight and somebody <laughs> didn't do the fundamentals and it's somebody that um made their name not doing the fundamentals and they uh they lost uh quickly and um and then as far as bad habits go you know i the word, I struggle the most in jujitsu because of the bad habits I've developed and trying to get out of them. Uh, really developed some ser some pretty bad ones in the beginning, um, you know, and I, I really had an emphasis on um, like open mat rather than uh, really learning the fundamentals, getting those down. And now I see the error in my ways and how, just how important the fundamentals are. And how much, um, you know, he talked a lot about surviving. You might not win, but you're going to survive. And and that's kind of the way I look at things. Um, I would much rather uh, at this point be known, I think, as a survivor on the mat. Like, man, that dude, you can't pass this guy. I'm not saying I'm there. And this is, this is just what I would hope people would say someday is, yeah, you know, you're not going to pass that dude's guard. Or he's a great guard passer. Uh, more so than watch out for, you know, some ridiculous, you know, move. Uh, I would rather be known for the movements. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, about, exactly. Right? That's where I I didn't just make that up. And you sound uh, smart. Well, I steal a lot. Um, <laughs> that's one of my good habits. But so you know, breaking those. What what happens when you break bad habits in jujitsu? Well, you so, learn the fundamentals. You so, start focusing on them, right? Before we get there. So I just looked up habit. What does that mean by definition, right? So it's, it's a regular tendency or practice mm -hmm. that is emphasizing that it's difficult to break and is emphasizing your, your reoccurring action, 
right? So it's like think some would call this a uh, muscle memory, or mm -hmm. some would call this you know execution of your process, or you know um, you know don't think do things of you know. There's many variety of you know, how people frame this, but it's essentially something that is being stored deeper in the side of your brain where you don't process the information, you just execute. Yeah. Often yeah. they think about skipping steps or just executing without analyzing, right? So all Or um, people think that they're going to be able to execute outside of class when they're not executing in class. I talk to the kids about this a lot. You know, we just did a, a week or two ago um, – we were talking about, you know, a simple technique of being pushed down and standing up in base. While, you know, guys, your your break fall is sloppy. And I know it's sloppy because you're not really being pushed full force. But if you develop that bad habit of break falling and letting your head lightly bounce off the mat, well, when you're in the playground or in you're in the school parking lot and you let your head lightly bounce off the concrete or the asphalt, well, guess what? You're not going to stand up in base because it's over. It's all, it's already over. Mm -hmm. And they look at me like they're, you know, they're deer in headlights. They're scared. And it's like, I don't, I don't want you to be scared. I want us all to now stand up and do 20 break falls and nobody's head is going to hit the mat or we're all going to do push ups, and I'm doing them with you. Let's do this. And, uh, to, to get them out of those bad habits so that it becomes muscle memory to tuck their chin rather than lightly bounce their head off the mat. This, this is one of the main reasons why I love our street program here at Roll Academy. And I'm not trying to promote the academy, but it, it, it is something new that we introduced recently in the recent past. But it's essentially a, a pivot of, of jiu-jitsu where we talk about some of these street situations. And it's more, more of a street aware-like um, where you could get hit, you could get punched, you could get kicked, and how do we, how jujitsu is applicable in those situations? And yeah. you know, kind of on the hat, on that, on that topic, the feedback very often is is like, damn, I didn't think that would hit me. I didn't, like, I, I, I was not aware of that because those strikes <laughs> are not coming in the yeah. sport. You know, I, like the rules of engagement are so different, mm -hmm. right? And and let's be honest, one or two of those hits. Especially in the face, you know. Yeah. I always th often say, you know, come up with a creative story because <laughs> somebody well, will ask you what happened to your eye, right? But it, it, it's not to create a violent or, or kind of you know dramatic situation here, but raise the awareness of what might or might not happen mm -hmm. in some of these in some of these um, situations. Yeah, and it's. Um it's fun. I just, all I could think of is when I'm your Uki and you're doing a, a technique where there's a possibility of striking, I know to protect <laughs> myself, you're going to get hit if you're working with Thomas. I would never hit you. Um, but well, don't say never. Right. Uh, how do you think bad habits are created? Because, uh, you know, from the source, that's kind of where, you know, what we should identify, right? We all trying to avoid bad habits, whether on or off the mat, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to have Doritos, but yeah, somehow, somehow I end up in this cabinet every single evening, you know, it, you know, it, it, and there's many ways how we look at this. But how do we develop the habit? Well, it depends. I, I think we need to put it in the context if we're talking about outside of jujitsu or or on the mat. But a lot of it boils down to maybe laziness. Uh, a lot of it can boil down to, um, you know, we're talking about the fundamentals again. I don't. I don't need to really know how to break fall because, um, you know, I'm always ag aggressive and I'm always in mount. I'm on, you know, well, guess what? You're going to get taken down. And if you don't know how to break fall, you're in trouble, you know, especially if it's outside the Academy. Um, so I think people just don't on the mat. I think people are looking to pro progress too quickly they don't realize that by skipping the fundamentals or giving them the, the importance that they have, um, that they're, they're creating bad habits. Uh, and then outside the academy, I think it could be anything from lazy to, um, you know, putting yourself, you put yourself in the situation where the habit is easy for you. And it's hard to. It's but why, hard. why do we choose the bad habit versus the good habit? A lot of times it's more fun. A lot of times it's easier. 
a lot of times it tastes better. A lot of times it's hanging out with your friends rather than doing the work that's still going to be waiting for you later. I, I think that's the last one is, is kind of impactful for me particularly is who we hang out with or who is the surrounding, where, what surrounding we find ourselves with. Because, look, I want to challenge the other stuff. Tastes better or looks better or is easier. If we never were exposed to the quote-unquote bad habit, we wouldn't know that it tastes better. Yeah, but I'm, well. But, but that's what I'm saying is, right? So, like, this is an extreme situation. But let's say just imagine somebody who never had chocolate in their life. Oh, that poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> proves my point. <laughs> right? But they never had chocolate in their life. And then you give them the chocolate. I bet you that chocolate is not going to taste, quote, unquote, good with the way how it tastes to you because they've never tasted that in their life, right? So if you look at that, you know, from a jujitsu perspective, you know, somebody who's never made the steps that you've made and now you show them the incorrect way, they're like, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? This is, this is not how it should be done. Am I, am I off on this? No, I know what you're saying. I just think that, um, yes, you know, the, I think our brain, that- our brain is very tricky and it fools, yeah. it fools us into thinking wrong is right. Right. Very, very often. Right. Um, because, the right way can be difficult. Um, the right way can not taste as good. I mean, I, you know, that for some reason we're keying on that. But um, you have to train your brain into giving you what's truly beneficial. Does that make sense? And, well, what, and that would go to understanding what's what's the purpose? What's the benefit? How, what do we really want? Right. Right. So like in the context of, of jujitsu is if we trying to improve a situation, but continue making the same steps, we'll never improve. Sure. Understanding what the purpose is behind. Right. What's, what is your purpose in jujitsu? I mean, a lot of people have different goals. Um, and not to say one is right or one is wrong, but if you're, if you're, if your goal is, if you're going for it on a clear path and a clear understanding of what you're going for and why, well, then you probably won't develop too many bad habits because you'll realize you can't have them in order to get to your goal. Let's talk about that example, for example, that Master Kaiki brought up on the, on the episode during the conversation, right? Um, his son was in, in, in a oh, situation yeah. in a parking lot, right? And his son is in a half guard, um, on top, and the individual on the bottom underhooked the outside leg with the purpose of sweeping, mm-hmm. right? Now, we're not going to say what, what happened. You need to listen <laughs> to the episode to find out what happened. But the point is, this was a, um, a sport-like action mm-hmm. taken in a street-like scenario. Right. You better right? get lucky. Because one thing that was not... Um, taken under consideration that on street strikes are loud or, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, you know, the rules of engagement are very different. Yeah. Right. So with that being said, the habit of sport like action, meaning underhooking and sweeping, reversing, potentially scoring points. Well, didn't yeah. work out so well. Right? right. So again, you can listen to the episode, find out what exactly happened. But, but the point is, a right, you know what? Somebody said this last week in a class, or yeah, right over the weekend. Over the weekend, I was with Professor Adam Razovic, mm-hmm. and he was teaching a, a, a seminar. And he said, uh, by the way, shout out to Professor Adam. Um, he said, a right technique at the wrong time is still a wrong technique. Sure. Um, so, in that kind of put in a perspective for me when Master Kaiki was talking about this particular scenario, it's like, just because you're sweeping somebody, underhooking, and and that there's nothing wrong with that sweep, but the purpose is very different. It, 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 the rules of engagement are different. You really right. have to think about the global picture, and is this going to work? And that some could identify that as that as a bad habit, because you executing it, but the result is you don't achieve the same result well, that, as you should be. Right? That, that's somebody who probably doesn't have a grasp of the fundamentals. Perhaps you know why if. Because what do we? What are the fundamentals? It's self defense. 
in my eyes. That's the fundamentals of jujitsu, protecting yourself outside of a, where the rules of engagement are more sport-like, where there's not a bell, striking's allowed, you know, protecting yourself from all of that. Um, so that in my eyes, under that scenario, that person probably doesn't have a great grasp of the fundamentals. They're going for something that works on the mat all the time, right? That sweep works all the time, but they didn't realize what could happen now that they're in a parking lot. Or they didn't realize, they don't realize that once you step outside the academy, those rules are, they don't matter anymore, mm-hmm. right? And, and uh, Master Kaiki's son did know that. Mm-hmm. And if yep. you're going to, if you are going to have both of your hands <laughs> as far away from your face as you could get them while we're no. in a parking lot no. uh, and you're on your back, well, you're, you're now going to get introduced to the fundamentals of jujitsu. <laughs> and um, well, let, so, let, let's make sure we clear on this. We are not trying to bash sport. I'm not trying to bash sport. No. Here. We're talking about different purpose. Yes. Right, so you can spin this in slightly different direction too. You're stepping on the mud during open training or sparring session. Your approach is not going to be the same when you're approaching somebody who is smaller than you versus somebody who is outweighing you by fifty or seventy pounds. Your approach should not be the same. The goal is different. The rules of engagement will be different. There is a clear uh, weight difference and perhaps strength difference, mm-hmm. right? And may, pro- perhaps speed difference, right? So the rules of engagements have changed. And acknowledging that and having a goal and a plan according to the rules of engagement will probably bring you this, the, the most success. So making sure that we don't ex- execute these bad habits. Well, do you think somebody who doesn't have a grasp of the fundamentals is going to have a lot of success in the sports situation? I think there is that possibility because the rule of, rules of engagement are different. Here's, what I'm, here's how I would frame this. Somebody who doesn't have fundamentals, they could still be successful in sport aspect of jiu-jitsu. However, if somebody does have phenomenal level of fundamentals, they will have more success than a person who doesn't mm-hmm. in a sports scenario. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the rules of engagement are different. You can part of part of the sport jujitsu is the fact that it's heavily point oriented. It's pe- heavily position oriented, right? There is a goal of achieving certain positions and scoring points, and ultimately perhaps submitting your partner and ending it earlier, right? So by knowing. The fundamentals, and, and by fundamentals we are referring to self-defense particularly, your escapes, weight management, your weight distribution, balance management, all those things will be emphasized and it will give you more success. But it does not mean that you cannot bear and bolo a flying triangle and finish the fight. You still can. You yeah, just, you can get caught, right? If Even if you have really solid fundamentals, you could get caught. Oh, you are talking about the opposite direction. Well, both directions. See, I think if you have a solid grasp of the fundamentals and all that newer, mm-hmm. fancier, if you want to call it that stuff, all the stuff that's more ingrained in, in sport, you're probably going to have a, a higher success rate. Because you're, oh, mi- you're missing something if you don't. I agree. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, f- again, kind of, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's like if you, if you do have fundamentals, deeper understanding of fundamentals and self-defense and jiu-jitsu, it will bring you, very likely, more success mm-hmm. when you convert to the sports scenario. However, right. if you don't, it doesn't mean that you will not succeed in sport. I just think that people who have solid core of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, their odds of their, their success will be much higher than the people who don't. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, I think you know we're probably arguing the same point. Um, Stop arguing with me. I'm not. I just want you to be... A little more clear. <laughs> Margaret, officially, I understand what you have to go through every single day. <sighs> Sometimes I just like to argue. Um, <laughs> Clearly. You know, it's funny. We always say we should get a bell for those things you say all the time. We should get one for me when I go. <sighs> <laughs> we, we don't need to. They hear it every time. Yeah, and they, and they probably know what I'm thinking by now, too. I have this board with eight buttons here, and we can make sounds. I should make one right now, like... No, no, you shouldn't. I think, it, I think, uh, um, just let it happen naturally. 
Right. But of course it, it. <laughs> yeah. The but the importance of the fundamentals are they cannot be underestimated. If you don't in my eyes, if you don't learn them, it's gonna catch up to you somewhere. You know? Think- hopefully it catches up to you and you make that realization on the mat and not when somebody's trying to uh take your wallet in the gas station parking lot. Silence. I think, yes. No. I think, I think. I mean. I think it's a good statement to end this on. <coughs> it, okay. Is it? Well, hopefully, it's a statement that you agree with. But no, I, I do agree. I mean, listen. Everybody who is exploring jujitsu, jujitsu is complex. It's not hard, difficult. It's complex. And it, anybody who's starting that journey, understanding the core, the basis, the fundamental aspects of it, including self-defense portion, is setting themselves for success in the future, mm-hmm. right? Skipping some of those. It doesn't mean that you can't be successful. Just your success will not be as successful. You will be not as high as somebody who does. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. and I right? think it's going to be harder too. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you know, these are core principles that you will be using throughout your journey of jiu-jitsu until you black belt and beyond, right? It, it's, it's It's been proven over and over and over. I feel like I'm we preaching to the choir. I preach to the choir the entire, like every single time this topic comes up, but it's, it is so important understanding the simplicity and importance of basics of balance, mm-hmm. protecting yourself, weight distribution, control, mobility. Those things will set you for success as you continue through your journey, especially if that journey will be a decade or two or three long you know, yeah. if you're in it for a long haul, somehow, some day, at some point, you're going to have to revisit the basics. Yeah. Just, it is what it is. Do you, do you think these people, and maybe this is a, we can end this, we'll bring it up later, but these people that focus solely on sport, do you think these are guys and uh, women that are going to get their coral belt someday? I don't know. I think that. That's not up to me. They're, that's up to people who are by far smarter than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wonder if they're going to be in it for the right, the long haul, the right reasons. Um, so, but like I said, maybe I we think, can talk about I think this later. is with a conversation of, you know, what's your goal in jiu-jitsu? Are you in it for the art? Are you in it for the medals? Are you in it for for competition? Are you mm-hmm. in it to, it, it, all that, it really depends, depends on the personal individual goal. And again, there's nothing wrong with competing. There's nope. nothing wrong with self-defense. They're just very different goals in my opinion, in my eyes at least. All right. Off to the next one. Off to the next one. Peace. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.